What do you know about millipedes? Maybe that the name means a thousand legs? That's valuable quiz night points, right? Or perhaps you heard that no species actually has that many and that the record is 750, only 750. Well, that's the thing with animal common names. They're a little bit silly at times. I mean, a jellyfish is not made of jelly and it doesn't look anything like a fish. And a ladybird or a ladybug, if you're an American, is definitely not a bird and it's not even a bug, it's technically a beetle. And half of them, not ladies. <laughs> Animal common names in English are not worse than they are in any other language. I'm originally from Brazil, and the name for millipede in Portuguese is actually piolho de cobra, which translates to snake lice. They're nothing like lice, and they have no business with any snakes, so the name for millipede in Portuguese is actually much worse. But whichever country you're in, the name millipede has been a bit of a lie for over 400 years since these animals got that name. And I have great news for you. We can all stop worrying about this inaccuracy, and I'll explain to you in a minute why. So you know when a record gets broken, for instance, the 100-meter sprint, does the new record get broken um, by five seconds, half the time. No, right? Because a tenth of a second would be a big deal. How about the high jump? Does the record get broken by a meter? Once again, no, because a centimeter is a huge deal. Well, right here in Western Australia, my team and I came across the first true millipede, more than a thousand legs. But did we just sneak over the line? Does it have a thousand and two legs? Let me introduce you to Millipis Persephone. So Western Australia has blown through the thousand legs barrier, and the superstar has up to 1,306 legs, so almost double the previous record holder. Please give it a round of applause. <laughs> and number of legs aside, millipedes are just amazing. They were the first animals to ever live on land. Some species glow in the dark. Some species produce cyanide, an extremely toxic defense chemical. Millipedes don't have a penis. Instead, they use their legs. I mean, it's all about legs with them. They have so many. So males <laughs> use a modified pair of legs to transfer sperm into the females. Crazy. There's at least one species where the males are responsible for looking after the eggs much like emus here in Australia. And very recently, the largest millipede fossil was discovered in the UK, two and a half meters long, estimated to have weighed 50 kilograms. So the largest invertebrate to have ever lived on land. And so far, we know about 13,000 species of millipedes, so that's more than all of the birds combined. And this is just the tip of the iceberg with many more species awaiting discovery. Going back to our Eumilopis persephone, this species is an absolute marvel of evolution. It's actually only 10 centimeters long and less than a millimeter wide. It is completely blind, pale. It's fully adapted to life underground. And that's why we named it Persephone, after the Greek goddess of the underworld. <laughs> The goddess Persephone was taken from the surface by Hades, deep underground where she became the queen of the underworld. This superstar here was found 60 meters deep in the Goldfields region of WA. That's as deep as a 24-story building is high. And imagine climbing those stairs when your legs are less than a tenth of a millimeter long. <laughs> this amazing species showcases the diversity of animals living in fractures and gaps in the rock beneath the surface, underground, sometimes in harsh and dry environments. So what else is out there? We have no idea. But m so much more valuable and amazing stuff, I'm sure. Let me give you some context. In the last two years, I've worked on biological surveys 
mostly focusing on small insects and arachnids, including the species that live deep underground. So how often do you think my team and I come across new species, unnamed, completely new to science, never seen before by a human? Well, last year alone, we didn't just find the Legius millipede, and it wasn't just another five species either. I estimate that we found at least 50 new species. It's a large number. I'm not even sure the, of the exact number. And if this surprises you, how about this? It's estimated that there are about eight to nine million species in this planet. Only two million, roughly, of them have been found and scientifically named. Now, the scary part of all of this is that we are driving species to extinction faster than we find and scientifically name them. And you will hear about it if a species of rhinoceros goes extinct, for example. But when, when you turn your attention to the smallest of animals, the vast majority is still entirely unknown to science, unnamed. We already know that we tragically lost between 1% and 2% of all species of birds and mammals lost to extinction. But at the same time, experts estimate that we've already found and named most species in these two groups. But in vertebrates, they are so much more diverse, and I'm not talking about five, ten times more diverse. I'm talking about thousands of times more diverse. So if we are losing, say, for example, insects to extinction at the same rate that we lose birds and mammals, and you run the numbers, we might have already lost 75,000 species of insects. The vast majority, completely unknown, unnamed, and now gone. This is called anonymous extinction. And I get asked, why should we care about invertebrates going extinct before we even find them and name them? I get it, it is hard to empathize with something you didn't even know existed, something that didn't even have a name. But let me make a case for the lost and unnamed. What if we were talking about people, losing thousands of people with no record that they ever existed? Sounds like a tragedy, obviously, because we are very aware of the unique value and potential of every human. So just the thought of losing Darwin, Da Vinci, Marie Curie, Einstein, along with all their contributions to science and culture, a disaster. Well, let me tell you that every species in this planet also has irreplaceable value. And before you judge me for comparing Einstein with the millipede, hear me out on this. Every species here represents more than three billion years of evolution. So are you willing to lose those incredible survivors without even knowing what you're losing? Because we are losing the useful before we even discover its usefulness. Just think that the first effective treatment for HIV was based on the biochemistry of a specific species of sponge. One of the most effective treatments for cardiovascular diseases inspired on the venom of a Mexican snake. But we are also losing the amazing inspiring before we blow our minds with the knowledge of their existence. Just think about the times you found yourself in awe of nature admiring a magnificent species. How reducing disappointing would our lives be without the full majesty of nature? Our new friend here now has a name, and that's the first crucial step to protect it. We only value something we at least have a name for, and we can only protect what we value. There's so much we can do to slow down and hopefully one day completely stop the tragic loss of biodiversity. But it is also vital that we look for these new species as hard as we can, study them, understand them, and give, give them a name before we accidentally wipe them from existence. To go extinct without anyone even knowing is the cruelest fate. And we are so much better than this. Thank you.